Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Revlin coming to you from Chicago. As usual, sorry, a little a little delay. You can blame it on Yesenia. You can blame it on Yesenia calling me about important law stuff. <laughs> Let's get this party started, shall we? All right. Awesome. Mr. Mr. Anderson, state your full name for me. Mr. Anderson is a vibe. I, I just, I, I, <laughs> she's trying to help him and he's like, whatever. I can't hear you. All right. Good morning, Mr. Anderson. How are you this morning? You're pretty good. Well, listen, Mr. Anderson. Yes. I heard some good things about you. I heard that you are 45 days sober. Is that correct? Yes. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, well, uh, according to our records, you're a little bit more. How many days? How many days sober are you? Oh no, not since you got the ticket, sir. You've had positive screen since you've been with me. But no, no. It, here's here's my point that you're not drinking and that's true yes. is that correct yes and you are making all of your appointments is that correct yes i am very very proud may of i have you. your attention may this i have your attention please this is security this is a false alarm i repeat this is a false alarm okay all right Y'all hang tight. All right. So, Mr. Anderson, I am very proud. So the judge is trying to be like the biggest cheerleader of all time, and he looks like he's in a hostage situation. Proud of you because I know that there's a lot of stuff that you have to do and places you have to be to work this program, but you are doing it. And for that, I want everybody in the courtroom to join me in giving Billy Anderson a judicial applause. Very good, Mr. Anderson. You are doing a wonderful job. You almost smiling, Mr. Anderson. You almost smiling. I saw you. You almost smiled. Almost. All right, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Listen, you are doing a great job, Mr. Anderson. How are you feeling about everything? Good. You feeling good about it? Yes. All right. And so when you go to your sessions, are you being open and honest with your provider so that they can give you the help that you need? Yes. Yes. All right. Very good. Have you noticed anything different about yourself? More money the same. I can't hear you. I'm the same for great money. You've been saving one more time. The money you don't spend on drinking, you can use it for something else, right? For the for the is he saying the alcohol tether? For the, for the tether, he's the using tether. it. Yeah, Judge, I can use it for the tether that you imposed on me. All right, so can y'all put it all together and tell me what he said? I couldn't hear. I couldn't so he hear. said, Your Honor, he, he said that he's saving his um, money that he used to use for drinking and is helping to pay for his tether. I got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, Mr. Anderson. And so I want you to continue to work your program, continue to work it. You deserve it. You owe that to yourself. And, and, most importantly, you're worth it. So do I have your commitment to continue to work the program? Yes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right, Mr. Yancey, tell me how Ms. If, is Mr. Anderson in compliance? Yes, Your Honor. He's in, he's in compliance. He's in the, the first phase. Like I said, he's uh, since he's been with me, um, he said all good screenings, no missed screenings, no nothing positive. Um, he's already um set up with his um uh, treatment sessions so and we've had uh weekly wow. contact so he is still in compliance your honor awesome awesome i'm very proud of you i am very extremely proud of you all right 
Mr. Anderson, do you have any questions for the team? Uh, when can he get ready to cheddar? When can he get ready to cheddar? Mr. Yancey will have to make that recommendation. Ms. Yancey, where are you? How long has he been on the tether? Uh, Your Honor, he is, I know he has been on the tether at least since September 12th, and I believe you had him on it before then. So um, he might, it sounds like he's been on at least 60 days. So he might be ready. Um, since when? Last week of July. July, wow. Yeah, but that was before. I think some of it was before me. And so yes. this is what I'll I'll do. Mr. Mr. Anderson, do you believe that you're ready to come off of the tether? Yes. All right. Do I have your word that you will go and test a minimum of two times per week random? Yes. Do I have your commitment that you will call every day? Um, because I may throw in an extra test here or there that you will call to check to see if you have to drop every single day. Yes. All right. Then if I have your commitment to do that and there's no objection from the team to removal of the alcohol tether, then I'm going to have it removed, okay? Yes. Let's try it. Now, you know we're getting ready to go into the holidays. I need you to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. All right, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Where or front tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? I suppose. On you, right? Yes, All right, awesome. Mr. Yancey, make the arrangements for it to be removed. And then what phase is Mr. Anderson in? Your Honor, Your Honor I will do that. And he's still in the first phase, Your Honor. All right. Very good. And so what I would like to do is Mr. Anderson is going to see you for a face-to-face -face on November 6, 2023 at 1.30 p.m. And then Mr. Anderson will see me on, let's see, is November 13th a good day? I don't have the right calendar today. Um, it is. Not for a, not, no, no, no. What, what's on the 13th of November, Miss Matt? I, um, I have it marked off for you. For light? Um, that's a possibility, yes. Okay. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and put Mr. Anderson on, but I'm going to put him on for 10 o'clock a.m., okay? On November 13th, 2023, I'll put you on for 10 o'clock a.m., okay? You get that, Mr. Anderson? Uh, yes, but I won't remember. Can I get wrote down? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, I'll sir. Matt, got you, okay? All right. And Thank then wait, wait to get, you're very welcome, wait to get instructions from Mr. Yancey for the removal of that, that alcohol tether today, okay? So give Mr. Yancey yes. a second to coordinate that, okay? Ms. Anderson, I'll come down there in about 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. You can have a seat. All right. All right thank you. You're very welcome. Remember, you look marvelous. Are you Kathy Burnett Williams? Yes. 19G010650M, people of the city of Flint versus Kathy Burnett Williams, and turn theater off. Thank you. Ms. Williams met with Mr. Bobe earlier this morning. Mr. Bobe went over the one count misdemeanor complaint and the maximum possible penalties as well as her rights. We'd ask the court to waive reading of each under a not guilty plea in her behalf. Schedule the matter for a pretrial conference. She's retired from General Motors and the Marine Corps. Uh, we would ask that she be appointed an attorney and when the court's ready to discuss this issue bond. All right, thank you. Ms. Williams, did your attorney or your attorney just stated that they did go over your charge, maximum possible penalty for your charge, 
and all of your rights with you. Do you need me to read any of that to you again? No, ma'am. You know when you understand all of those things? Yes, ma'am. I right, have the reading of the charge, maximum possible penalty for that charge, as well as Ms. Williams' rights, as both she and her attorney have indicated she knows and she understands those things and does not need me to read them to her again today. One or not guilty plea on her behalf and set this matter for a pretrial hearing, and I will appoint court appointed counsel. And attorney Theodoroff in regards to bonds. As I mentioned, she's retired for General Motors and is a Marine Corps veteran. She's not on probation or parole, does have a driver's license. Apparently, she lives at a hotel. She's been in jail three days. I know that this is a 2019 case. I just asked the court to send appropriate bond. Do you know, is, does she still have any contact with the alleged victim? I don't know. Do you have any contact with this victim, Miss Williams? No, sir. I don't even recall the um, incident that occurred. I will. Don't, 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 don't say any. Don't say, Miss Williams. Don't say anything else. Don't say anything else. All right. And so. Okay. My I read that as I still do have contact with the victim, but I want to claim that I don't remember the incident, so that so that if I violate, I I can say I didn't know. So stupid. You've now just said on the record you don't recall the incident. Now the, the state ha can, it's just open season on you. The state can say anything. And then and then if you, if you dispute it later, say, do you, do you remember saying you don't remember the incident at all? At your arraignment? Ugh. So I will issue a $5,000 personal recognizance bond on this case. Ms. Williams, while you're on bond with this court, you're not to use any alcohol, any recreational marijuana, or any illegal controlled substances. You are not to possess or purchase any firearms or any other dangerous weapons or ammunition. And you are to have no contact with the alleged victim in this case. But it sounds like you don't have any contact with that person, so that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, there is a pretrial set for November 6, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. And that will be with Judge Crawford. Anything else to drink, Peter Ross? Nothing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Ms. Williams, you're all done. You can go. What does that mean? It means you have a court date on November 6th at 8.30 a.m. with Judge Crawford, and you better make sure you go to that court date. Okay, am I going to get out today? You will. I'm, put a personal recognizance bond, so you're going to get out of jail. Okay, thank you. I don't even know. I don't know who I was don't, supposed don't. to Miss Williams, Miss Williams, Miss Williams, there's a reason why attorney tells you not to say anything. Don't say anything okay. else. Just go ahead and go. Thank you. Welcome. I believe that's all our jail files. It is. I'll all right. Start on the walk Very good. Thank you, jail. No, yeah. yeah, stop talking about your case, please. Um, and he was aware of at least one of the other drug driving charges, but now you have three of them. You know, I turned myself in, and then a week later, they I found out that they brought one back from May two. I don't. Well, they had to wait for the laboratory results. We looked them up. There were three different locations, and um, I, I submitted to. I let them take me to the hospital and draw my blood. And yeah, and it had fluoroxephine or whatever the ingredient is in duster spray. And so it takes a while for that to come back. Um, and Deborah Davis has joined us from the prosecutor's office, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, you have to also see Judge Pattison in some of those other cases. Deborah, this case was a recommendation for no upfront jail time, but I don't really want to do a probation on this charge. She completed a probation previously. She didn't pay the fines. And now she has fines unpaid in two other cases. And she has three drugged driving charges pending. What I don't know, it's why I'm glad you're here, is how she'd been doing in her abuse and neglect cases, whether she'd been testing. I know she had gone to Gilmore. And then when I first, I came in about 10 after seven this morning and she wasn't on the jail roster. Then a little later, I learned that she was on it. 
that she had turned herself in. I left work and came to take care of it all. I, I didn't mean to miss court last week. I The ride I had didn't show up and I called and I, I have a job. I'm working at Viking and I love it. It's gotten a vehicle now so I can rely on myself to get to my testing. I don't need nobody else. Going into my own home, like I'm trying. All right. Deborah, do you have any input on this case? Well, it's a bit complicated. Uh, Lori Hines just sent me a text saying that she heard that Ms. Jones had been um, turn, turned herself in or picked up whatever. She was supposed to be here last Wednesday uh, for her jury trial, which was going to be a plea uh, to kind of a global offer in all of those OUID cases. Um, but I don't know how she's doing in her abuse and neglect case. Um, I just sent a message to Chief Assistant Robert to see if he's got any input. But last I knew from Ms. Hines, um, you know, she wasn't keeping in great contact with Ms. Hines. I don't know what she's been doing. And that's kind of the, the unknown that we have is she wasn't preparing for her trial. I don't know what she's been up to. Um, and actually, I just got a note from Mr. Robert. He filed a termination petition in August, and the trial is coming up soon. So she's not doing well in her abuse and neglect case. Mr. Bush, what would you like? And in your credit, you got like one second notice that she'd been uh, turned herself I think in. Attorney Natsinger represents her in the abuse and neglect case. Yes, he does. Last I knew, she was going to the day report center three times a week, and they'd all been negative since she returned from Gilmore. I mean, those are the notes that I have from my client back in early September. Uh, we, we, well, the day reporting center has problems testing for huffing ingredients. It's very difficult to detect. You can't do it with a PBT or the normal urine tests, uh, but... So I don't know what she's been doing. So Sarah, what have you been doing? I've gotten a job. I'm working. I That's three requirements I need. It is the job, house, and car. And I've finally landed them all. And I have had to rely on rides. And it just doesn't help me. Not, I haven't been doing Duster. I haven't. I, I understand that that was a problem. But I'm trying. And I... Now it's all just. It is. Well, this is your second oh, methamphetamine you. case. And on May 5th, the car was full of duster cans. You got arrested um, on Big Hill Road. I was never arrested. I well, you got, and that's part of the problem is this, you were on a tear in May. This was May 5th. Uh, a possession of a small amount of methamphetamine and a car full of duster spray. He got arrested or ticketed on May 11th. The very next day on May 12th, he got ticketed again for OUID. And then you were quite disoriented on May 25th. So they sent the stuff to the crime lab. And so you have three OUID cases, plus all this other unpaid stuff. And, uh, um, yes. Also, um, <clears throat> there may be somebody from CPS trying to join this hearing, Sue Pennock. Well, I've got Justin's phone, but I don't know who it is. Okay. Um, Jordan Nancy is involved with this, um, the abuse neglect case, and she let Sue Pennock know that there was a sentencing today. It's the CPS supervisor she was going to try and get on. And I also did receive... Um, note from Mr. Robert that she has not been testing often and she was positive for methamphetamine in July. So that would have been after these huffing and driving incidents and the possession of the methamphetamine in May, she then tested positive for methamphetamine in July. Sarah, I don't know what to say. I've got this case, but And Mr. Marvin went into this with his eyes open. He made a recommendation of no upfront jail, but 
Um, then other things have transpired since then. This was in September. Lori Hines is here. Thank you for that, Lori, who's representing you in some of the other cases, abuse and neglect cases. No, her th other three criminal, well, oh, yes. actually two of the criminal matters. Yes. She hasn't been arraigned on the third one. Um, but we, Debbie Davis had given us a global offer to settle. Yes. Perhaps the best option today is if she could do that and maybe we could settle. Well, I set this for after her jury trial. She didn't show up on Wednesday. And much to everybody's chagrin. She needs jail. I don't um, know what happens, but this woman needs jail. So fortunately, uh, Lori and Judge Pattison and Deborah Davis were it's you know, only communicating chance. and they called the jurors off because Sarah had done such a poor job of staying in contact with everybody. Sarah, you're going to go to jail for a while before all this is done. Um. You don't get five free passes. Yeah, let's start um, now. I don't know what it's going to be. The recommendation is no upfront jail. No. Can I please have the probation center or something so I can keep my job? <laughs> I can't answer that. Excuse me. I'm going to use of methamphetamine judgment. Um, when did you get out of Gilmore? Oh, I turned myself in right when I got out. Why didn't you show up for your jury trial I, last month? Right, I had didn't show up. In the, well, why didn't I you called, I called, called who? The courthouse and I did you home. ever talk to your lawyer about the fact that hey, I have a jury trial tomorrow? I didn't, I wasn't aware that it was a jury trial. I was told it wasn't a jury trial, that it wouldn't make it to jury trial. And I called and I spoke to two um, ladies that here. I was trying, I, I should have just walked. I was already late by waiting at somebody. Thank you. I had every intention on in coming to court. I had just talked to the Lori the day before in both of the times. When I had to go to Florida when my son drowned, I had called her and let her know on the way that I did hear about this. Yeah, my son drowned. In when? In the care of these people. Where? In Florida when they took him out of state without my permission. Um, when? In July. Uh, that's completely outside my realm of knowledge, and I'm sorry. So your son was in foster care, and yeah, but I I did great for eight months, and I just all right. I'm trying to do what I can do. Yeah, you know, looking at my notes, I. Based upon what she told me when I first met her, I think she was in Gilmore Center for two weeks in mid to late August of 2023, if, if that helps. I think she was there from 810 to 824. I came in and I turned myself in that following Monday. And that, and was on eight, that was on 828. Yeah. 
Well, you got other problems. Two days credit, two days. You've got a pattern of not paying your fines and costs. I'm not putting you on a probation in this case. There's no sense of it. I haven't had a reliable job until yeah. this one. But when I talked to you before, you were applying for a job at American Axel. Yeah, they, I went through the whole process. I had everything. Oh, I don't know. I, they were going on strike last I knew. Yeah, the timing wasn't great. I don't know how you were going to get back at fourth either. Yeah, but but I, I'm working at Viking and I love my job. And I, I told them this morning when I went in, I let them know everything. And they said, I have a job when they come out. Or, All right. Well, you can tell that to Judge Pattison. $125 or two additional days. I'm not going to chase you for money anymore. Uh, I did payment plans. Um, one problem with duster spray is it permanently damages your brain makes you dumber it lowers your iq and your cognitive capacity is diminished after extended use of it you seem better today but you've got lots of problems uh, in your other cases and i'm very sorry i did not know your son had drowned and I'm not sure anything about it. it. doesn't have to do with this. But the deal was no upfront jail, presuming there'd be a probation. But I don't want a probation. And I don't want you to withdraw your plea in this matter. I'm going to order two days, credit two days, $125 fine, or two other days, which will get swallowed up by what else you're going to do. But you've got three cases of that pending, possibly more. So they're waiting for you next door. Lori, thank you. Um, good luck, Sarah. Just you got... she's here. Yes, he and I talked this morning about 9.30. Well, that was just awful. Uh, Debbie, I'm waiting for Taylor Combs. Um, and uh, she's going to be in the court next door. Well, she had one case here and she has three more cases next door. Okay. Did she get a No. Well, she got only two days jail and $125 or two more days, but she has three more cases pending. She's probably not going to get a bond, but uh, she'll be in there in just a few minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. John, I appreciate it. you walked in the door and they said, wait a minute, you got a case. Um, I, her bigger problems are next door. We have, I haven't dealt with a Huffington person in a long time. And we used to see that. But our old friend, Mr. Owen. Sorry about that's that. Actually what I, was going to I didn't know. Uh, good morning. That was a downer. You're, 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 uh, just have um, I'm very sorry about your aunt. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I got an email yesterday and all my classmates were in shock. I had just been in contact with Dennis last week. Didn't say anything about it. So very sorry. I've known her since kindergarten. Uh, Vivian is here on Ilias. Alvarez, who's not here. Um, John Bush has shy winters and Rebecca Kroos. Uh, I'm not clear whether Rhonda got notice on Alexis Sullivan or not. What? I have answers for you on that. Okay, what is that? She's answer? not going to be here. She's on vacation for her birthday this week. So she may have gotten notice. But she's not here. All right. Good morning, Vivian. Your defendant isn't here yet. Okay. Taylor Combs and Luke were set for the 1030. Is your sister out there? I'm going to see her. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Aaron. Well, um, 
Miss Sullivan isn't going anywhere, so we'll leave her where she is. Uh, is Mr. Winters here? Oh, thank you, Maria. Well, this doesn't seem to be happening. We have a lot to do and it's hard to align all the stars. <clears throat> be deported. Y es muy probable que usted sería deportado. Would you take this form downstairs to the probation department? Yes, I have two questions. Yes. ¿Cuál es son? Uh, uh, La primera, tengo que pagar $1,472 y en cuánto tiempo tengo que pagar eso y dónde lo voy a pagar. I'm sorry, the interpreter couldn't hear. ¿Puede hablar en voz alta? No la escuché. La multa que voy a pagar, los $1,472 dólares, ¿en cuánto tiempo debo de pagarlo y en dónde lo voy a pagar? So for the $1,472, how much time do I have to pay that? And where do I pay that? One year. Tiene un año para pagarlo por su totalidad. That's a very good question because I forgot to say that. Es una muy buena pregunta porque se me olvidó decirlo. Uh, en la segunda, me dijo ocho días de cárcel. A uh, decir los fines de semana tengo que venir yo a, a, a eso. O van a ir por mí o, o como. So with the eight days of jail that's ordered, um, do I need to show up or is somebody going to come by and pick me up? How does that work? The probation department will explain that to you. El Departamento de Libertad Condicional le va a explicar en detalle eso. You're going to need to get a ride to the jail every Friday night. Usted va a necesitar que alguien le traiga a la cárcel este, los viernes en la noche. And someone pick you up every Sunday night. Y alguien para recogerle cada domingo por la noche for four weeks por un plazo de cuatro semanas all right you go with mr huff and he'll explain some of that with priscilla's help ya puede acompañar al señor huff y priscilla este le va a ayudar a explicarlo free to go ya se puede retirar Anything else for the interpreter, Your Honor? No, thank you, Vivian. You're welcome. Have a good day. As I indicated, that took three times as long as it would have. We have more to do, except one of our defendants isn't here. But let's go with Rebecca Crows, who is here. That's correct. All right, very good. Yes, parts of entry. Yes, there's a letter that the defendant would like you to read, and I also have an update from services. Very good. <laughs> we need something, don't we? We kicked it off with the Horribly this sad is case. File number 231723SD. Then move to an interpreter. This is Rebecca Renee Kroos. Ms. Kroos is here with his, her lawyer, Mr. John Bush, for sentencing on a charge of operating while impaired, first offense. Also present is Daniel Frazine from the probation department and uh, Autumn Kiefer, who is our chief uh, sobriety court probation officer, is also present. Um, as I said at the time of your sentencing, I've had my eyes on this since the day after you got arrested on Labor Day. And uh, 
Let me take a minute and read your letter. Dear Judge, don't send me to jail. Love defendant. Okay, that's not probably what it says. <laughs> oh. Itchy, that's really cool. I am also looking forward to you becoming the best version of yourself. Thank you. Um, John, what would you like me to know? <laughs> I suggest the facts of this case overwhelmingly merit intense supervision, a change of her lifestyle. I, I do believe that sobriety court would be the, the best option we have in St. Joseph County for her to make the changes that she wants to make. Thank you. Rebecca, what would you like me to know? Um, just that I'm extremely um, remorseful for my actions and that I'd like the opportunity to rehabilitate myself. And, um, you know, I apologize to you and the arresting officer. And I really do feel like sobriety court um, would help me, you know, to receive the proper treatment and tools that I need to become sober. Because like I said, I want to be a better version of myself, a you know, better wife, mother, friend, and obviously drinking takes away from that. So well done, Mr. Bush. I think in some ways this is probably like a blessing in disguise, you know. He, and so he got his client under control. This is um, the way it's done. Yeah. Every week somebody famous gets arrested for drunk driving. Um, the movie actress Anne Hesch crashed into a house and burned to death in a drinking driving accident. Some lady from one of the reality shows crashed her car into somebody's house earlier this month while intoxicated. The house changed lanes, and though. I always wonder what's going on, not shame on them. What kind of pain were they in that caused them to do that? And you probably remember this. You were at a wedding that I did um, for your friend the night the power went out at the wedding reception. And uh, they brought generators in to do it. You and your friend were there, and you looked like two movie stars. Uh, I won't mention her name. This was a long time ago. Uh, we were both younger then. And you had all the potential in the world. Uh, you and your friend were dressed for a wedding. Um, and uh, were glamorous and ready to take on the world. And alcohol is in there. You've already done some hard work. We read the screening, uh, your psychological report. And it answered some of the questions about what is going on underneath. A lot is going on underneath. And you need the structure and support that we've got from the sobriety court program. It's the best I got. And I'm pleased that you're willing to do it. Um, now, I thought your sister was gonna be here today also. Yeah. And I don't know what is going on, but she needs the same program you do. Mm -hmm. And the guy we just talked to needed it. Um, and 
I can't do it in Spanish. And the first girl, Miss Jones, she has got all kinds of problems and has three drunk driving charges pending, drug to driving, three, all from the same month. I don't think she's going to make it into our program. She's got other problems. But you are somebody that I think could be successful, turn your life around. There was an assault case in there, which was also alcohol related. And that was dismissed. I'm very pleased that your husband is here because um, you're going to need family support. Mm -hmm. And you said it, it's better for your family, better for your daughter, better for your life. Um, so we're going to try it. And I don't have any reason to believe that you couldn't be successful at it. I will say again, you were very forthcoming in your psychological evaluation, and it kind of took us aback. It's like, whoa, we really need to try to pull this girl into the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, uh, you drew this one, but as you know, she's headed in our direction. Um, anything else you wish to add? Um, just, just one thing that I was really impressed not only was she very forthcoming, but even when we weren't certain due to the uh, refusal, how it would affect her status of getting a license within the possible uh, 45 days while things work out. Um, she said, I really don't care. I just would like the structure of sobriety court, which I think speaks volumes. Obviously, she has a lot of uh, physical, mental, and other reasons for wanting to do this. They're all very motivating for her. And I just think this is really going to be a program that's going to be a help her make a much better future and hopefully save her life in the long run. And I think she'll do well. I hope so. Um, one of our guys in sobriety court has several prior drunk drivings and he was doing really well till he wasn't. Um, he got arrested for fleeing and looting from Indiana across the state line. Um, and he's in jail now on a $50,000 bond. He's going to lose his job, his house. Um, alcohol can take it all away, but you've impacted your physical health. It could take away your life. So this is literally a matter of life and death, and you're wise enough to know that, but it isn't easy. It isn't like, well, I got this under control. It's really hard work, but I can introduce you to one bunch of people who are turning their lives around. And we were afraid because that we weren't going to get you because there would be no benefit license wise. There probably will be eventually to help you get your license back. One of the logistical things is you got a lot of places to be. Yeah, I have a lot of concern with that, too, because I don't have anybody that can help me. With well, we're going to do the best we can. The worst, the hardest thing is the testing. You can't test remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, I can meet with you by Zoom. You can go to our treatment group by Zoom, but you have to be physically present to test. Now you live in Three Rivers and the testing is in Three Rivers, so that's a benefit, but that's gonna be, and it is for everybody because when you get two drunk drivings, you lose your driver's license. Yeah. So everybody has the same issue for at least a couple of months. Some people, we get their license back with an interlock. So that's an impediment that we're going to try to deal with. We're already ahead of the game. She's going to qualify. Sorry, court trumps the invite consent. She can't oh. Autumn did tell me that, and it was a pleasant surprise that we're going to be able to... The irony of this is the only way you'd get your license back is to get this charge and get in this program but we can get you a license with an interlock device, but it's gonna be 45 to 60 days before we can do that. Yeah. Um, 
All right. Um, All right, I'm gonna follow it as it's written. The maximum here is 93 days. I'm ordering 22 days credit to, giving 20 days to serve. Of uh, those 22 days, 20 are deferred. So you're not gonna do any more jail time, which is one of the benefits of sobriety court. You're also gonna have the attempt, the potential to get your license back. I'm gonna make the fine zero. There's a $75 crime victim's rights fee, $50 state minimum fee. We'll cut the screening fee in half to $50. There's a $150 attorney fee. There's $960 probation oversight fee, which could be cut in half. Uh, there's a police reimbursement of $200. Yeah. <clears throat> If anyone knows of a call where, with sobriety where they're court. misbehaving, let me know. It meets tomorrow at 2.30. You're going to be here live tomorrow. The first session is live. After that, you can appear remotely. But we'll meet tomorrow. Um, and I'll introduce you to the other people in the program. Um, I want you also to do the victim impact panel. Let's add that up. 75, whoops, 75, 50. One fifty. Nine sixty. Two hundred and thirty-two. It's fifteen seventeen. There's no bomb here. You're killing the pain. And we're going to try to get at what is causing the pain. And it can get so much better. You feel better, you sleep better, your skin gets better, um, you look younger. I see it almost every day that when people get clean, they just start to look and feel better. They'll sleep better. Um, no drugs and no alcohol including marijuana, you're on some prescription medications, which you can take as prescribed. Some of those are absolutely, you're not supposed to combine those with alcohol, but then you're gonna test as directed. All right. Mr. Bush that. has been around for a long time. He's had a lot of people go through the sobriety court program successfully. And I guess he can see one when he sees one, you know one when he sees one. And I think he's all in favor of this. You're doing your counseling at Covered Bridge. You're for the first time really taking a deep dive into recovery, but it ain't easy. But we're going to be here to try to help you and stay on top of it. I've also um, went through Pivotal as well. I, I saw that report, which was, like I said, very eye-opening. Um, there's people that are actually going to care about what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I got 17,000 cases and 12 people in sobriety court presently. A couple more on the way. Um, all right. You go downstairs and I'll be meeting with you in just a bit. I don't know what happened with Taylor's case. She's not here and Luke's not here. So there must be some sort of mix up on the notice, but it was scheduled for today. Um, um, Luke's not yes. He's in vacation. He should be back tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow he's coming back. Well, this was scheduled by Judge Patterson for me because it's a sobriety court case. Um, again, uh, I'm sorry about your loss. I'm still sort of shell shocked. Did they know anything about arrangements or anything yet? Uh, I think Thursday is what I heard. Okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday.
charges of domestic violence, assault, and resisting a police officer. Ms. Bono referred to her court after having waived his exam. And on April 12th, contacted the probation department indicating he had been placed on a tether to Wayne County Jail early that week. His ultimate plea was to attempt resisting and obstructing the domestic violence charge was dismissed. On April 18th, he was he had an appointment at Detroit Recovery Project, but the appointment was canceled and he was going to notify DWIN for a new counselor. He's completed 13 weeks of anger management. No payments have been made. Has your client notified, has he contacted DWIN regarding a new counselor? Uh, yes, yeah. Your Honor, and he's, he's also uh, uh, Is this the right counseling part? through RTS. And he's also completed 13 weeks of his anger management. Uh, it's 13 out of the 16 weeks. Uh, anger management. <clears throat> no, I completed the whole session. <laughs> oh, okay. I apologize. Yeah, oh, I'm done. I got my certificate. <laughs> I can't believe And, um, Your Honor, I hate to cut him off, but, um, <laughs> Your Honor, I'll start. Um, first, I want to thank you for giving me a chance because no judge really give me a chance. They just throw me in jail. But I start uh, truck driving school at All Stars on 4th Street on Monday. So I got approved class start at 9 a.m. Monday, November 6th for my CDLA. And I'm in a batter's therapy for 16 weeks after I completed anger management for 13 weeks. I did orientation last week, a four hour orientation in Livonia. And my first regular session class start uh, this Wednesday on the 1st at 6 p.m. in um, Lincoln Park, Michigan. Um, I'm currently working um, for uh, Detroit Quality Staffing. I'm a car porter. I've been working since I've been out of jail. Two weeks after I got out of jail in April, I've been working ever since. Um, excusing a layoff, you know, because I'm dealing with cars with Ford. We basically carporting for uh, Ford. So with they lay off. So I had a couple months of setbacks, but I just thank you. I've been doing really good. So. That's all. And I hated to cut him off. He just now get my case. But that's just to sum everything up. Like, I appreciate you. And I start paying once I get this career. It's only going to take four to six weeks for me to get my uh, to get my certificate for my um, truck driver license. So I'll be able to start paying some money. It's just been rough. I take care of four kids. So it's not an excuse. But I'll get it done. I just thank you. That's it. OK. <laughs> and um, I hear everything you're saying, sir, um, which I appreciate hearing that, but I didn't hear the answer as to whether or not you ended up um, contacting DWIN for a new um, treatment provider. Contact who? Who did I? I mean, Detroit who? Wayne Integrated Health Network. Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network? No, I don't. You were supposed to have had an appointment with Detroit Recovery Project to enroll in counseling. That appointment was canceled, and then you were going to notify DWIN, which is the, I think it's an 800 number or an 888 number that you contact yeah. to get a new counselor. That was that. Oh, I apologize. I, I didn't know that. I'm getting poor. You know, I'm still, I just got sent this from the other case. I, I got a lot. I'm trying to do all this at once, and I'm forgetting stuff. I'm just trying to do stuff the best way that I can. So I'm in this batter's therapy class. Like I didn't, I mean, I can get the number and call and enroll, but that's like, I, I got a lot going, a lot of positive things going on. And like, I, I don't, I don't, I have no clue, Your Honor. Like I'm just doing a lot. <clears throat> but I can get the number, Your Honor. I'm not saying that I can get the number and get in. I was thinking that with me being in this therapy with this 16 week class that, that was that, but I uh, talked to my probation officer. I can get a number from her and call and enroll in that. And, you know, I'll take care of it. It's not, you know, I'm not making no excuse or nothing. I'll just get the number from her. It's just a lot. I'm trying to basically just do a lot of things to stay busy, Your Honor. That's all. I understand, but also you can say as busy as you want, but if you're not, if you're not looking into and working on this and you're not looking into and working on the reasons why you're having as much police contact as you're having, then that's going to still continue potentially to no. occur 
without you having addressed that issue, that underlying issue. I so understand. Perhaps, um, perhaps the banner therapy will address that, but I don't know if it does because it's not. It sounds as though it's more of like a class, which I'm not discounting that at all. I think that's a great oh. idea for you, sir. Mm -hmm. But what I'm indicating is that counseling is individually focused, so it's one on one, and uh -huh. you can address more. I don't need it too. Yeah, I understand. Right. That's why we've been waiting since April. Well, okay, so I'll just get the, so get the number from my probation officer. Yes, you can call Ms. Shine. She can give you the number for D-Win, and then you can um, let me know at your next jail review. Okay. I'm about to take care of it today. Yeah. I enrolled today, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so I will adjourn the jail review. We'll adjourn it to December 11th at 10.30 a.m., you should be right around the end of your six weeks also, sir, as far as your, it may even be your last week of class. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I got I'll be enrolled in everything. Thank you. Okay. And so after you contact D one today, sir. Okay. Send that information, send that information to Ms. Shine with your appointment. Okay. Your appointment. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge. Right. Good luck to you, Mr. Hill. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm skeptical. Okay, so so David, right. David uh, so we are kills the show here, according to my chat. On the record. In the matter of David Rudolph, two, three, five, three, zero. And appearance counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke appearing behalf of my client, consenting to the matter being heard via Zoom. And Mr. Rudolph, if you can please state your name for the record. David Dante Rudolph. All right, thank you. Okay, today's date scheduled for a jail review. Your client was Sentence in May of 2023 for disorderly conduct as assaulting your existing officer was dismissed. And he was sentenced to probation and 30 days on the alcohol tether. He was permitted to travel to Virginia for a funeral. Upon his return, there was a probation violation whereby he pled guilty on June 21st. The court sentenced Mr. Rudolph to five days jail, suspended that jail pending a jail review on August 28th. On August 21st, we held the jail review and adjourned it to October 23rd whereby we were at the court to schools program. So we thought it appropriate to set it for today's date instead of the court to schools program. And so today is the date scheduled for the jail review. And Mr. Shunke? Your Honor, I've had an opportunity to review the jail review. I saw the recommendations. I'd ask they be adopted. Nothing further from the defense. Oh, that, that's so my chat right Rudolph, there. Did you go test on October 19th as... Um, Ms. Shaw had instructed you to do? Your Honor, it was an oversight. Um, I always, the first thing I do every morning when I wake up is check whether I have to report or not. Because I have to plan, because I don't drive for obvious, excuse me, obvious reasons. Um, it was an oversight. I, I understand tested, that. And that was I the one. Tested, that was, I, you know, excuse me. Excuse me, please. Just one moment. I understand that, that October 7th, October 17th was an oversight. I understand that, sir, which is why Ms. Shaw 
advise you to test on October 19th. Did you go test on October 19th? Yes. Yes, in Lincoln Park on 4th Street. Okay. Okay. I, right, I filled out the paperwork accordingly. If you don't have it, it's not my fault. I, I have a receipt. I oh, paid boy. $25 to pee in a bottle. Sir? Sir, I didn't say I didn't have it. I'm just trying to make a record. So I was asking if you went to test on right. October 19th. Right. Was it negative or positive? Jesus. That's a that's a problem. What's the problem, sir? What are the test results? I'm looking in the file, sir. Oh, I'm sure they're negative, as all of them have been. Your Honor, I respectfully want to address the court. I left my house at the age of 17 to join the military, to join the military police corps, because I love law, I love order. But <laughs> what is going on in this country is the gross misconduct of justice. I respectfully ask you to release me from probation. I'll pay my fines and I'm done with this circus. And it's not on you, it's not on the court. It's, it's, if my last name was Biden, I wouldn't be drunk in front of this court. Everyone knows it. If my last name is Trump, I'd be on a cross, crucified. And that's the only person that cares about this country. Because the Democrats and half the Republicans want to roll this country under the ground. And I've seen too many brothers and sisters die for this. And that's and that's all I have to say. Whatever you want to do to me, I don't care. I, I can. That, that was more than enough, sir. What? What's the balance of my? I'm not asking you to do it, but I've done it plus ten. I, I I did eight years in the military, and a hundred days in jail doesn't mean sh crap to me. Well, I appreciate your um, restraint in choosing your words carefully. <laughs> and to answer That's your right. question, sir, your test your test was negative. And thank you. The, and um, the court. Please let me go. That's all I want. I, I won't step foot in line not anymore. I'll pay you the couple hundred bucks I owe you. Please leave me alone. That's all I ask. That's why I live in Monroe. Because I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to deal with anyone. That's why I have three <laughs> acres. I can respect that. However, sir, Thank you. All right. there is still a job that I have to do. And so All the right. court had originally sentenced you to 18 months probation. You're eligible for early discharge. So you have a few more months to go if there aren't any violations um, for the next few uh, months well, okay, for, you to, for you to request early discharge. Ma'am, with all due respect, yes. that's, not, that's not acceptable. No, it's not acceptable? <laughs> no, it's not. I've earned the right well, to do what I want to do. And so what's the balance? So if I don't comply, what's going to happen? Oh, this is the part where my lawyer can speak up. My court appointed lawyer, even though I paid $5,000 for a long time to represent me, and then he drops me because he's a shill. Shepke, got anything to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, raise your eyebrows. What's Nothing. On Rudolph? Rudolph? What's that that time, Mr. Rudolph yeah, has, right. uh, has made a statement, and I still respectfully request that um, jail not. No, I don't have anything to say. You, you, you covered it all. <laughs> not being posed. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Um, <clears throat> you absolutely have the right to. Um, 
behave as you want to behave within the confines of the law and within the confines of this court's order regarding probation based upon the events that occurred on March 18th, <clears throat> which is why you're in front of this court. Oh, because, because, because sir, is sir, there, I don't mean to, I don't. Mean, Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Right, Rudolph, okay. please. I allowed you to say your piece, so please That's fair. refrain from interrupting the court <laughs> while I am speaking. With the exception of your <laughs> use of alcohol on your trip that this court gave you permission to attend for a funeral for one of your um, comrades, if I recall correctly. Other than yeah. that, there has you haven't had any other violations. So the recommendation is for the jail review to be adjourned, to not impose the jail at this time. So that's what the court's going to do. I will also, sir, remind you that when you are, when you have your appointment with your probation officer, that that is also an extension of the court. So appropriate behavior and language is expected. I'm I do not, hand. I don't mean that. I, just, just one moment, please. Please let me finish. I'm raising my hand like I'm in grade school. Go ahead, ma'am. Oh, no. The communication that you have had with Ms. Shaw is less than stellar, and that cannot continue. The staff here does not, do not need to be subjected to the language and types of communication that Ms. Shaw was subjected to. Yes, Mr. Mind. Rudolph. Mr. Rudolph, yes, did, did you, yes, did you yes, understand what? I, did yes, ma'am, I do. Ad nauseum, ad nauseum. That's Latin. I don't understand that. I'm very well educated. As well I didn't as say you weren't, sir. All right, all right. First Amendment. What? I can't speak what I have to speak. It's the First Amendment. It's the first. Amendment of the Constitution. I don't care if she doesn't like the way I speak. I've earned the right to speak how I speak because I know when I'm getting F. Thank you. I'll pay you the money. Leave me alone. I won't go. I won't step foot and wind on. This is ridiculous. Sir, I you you're gonna make me a pariah. You're gonna make me a pariah. Uh, and I'll do it, and I'll expose it. I don't care. You can't do anything to me that hasn't been taken from me. Do you understand that, ma'am, sir? Sir, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I ain't playing the game anymore. I'm not <laughs> sir, playing the again, game. Listen, I am not going to have you. Yelling and screaming at me. I'm not yelling and screaming. This is the way I talk. I'm half Italian. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, let me also state this, sir. While there is a First Amendment right. Right. This, I didn't this pull court, a fire alarm. Excuse I didn't pull a fire alarm. I don't, I'm the Senate sir, floor. Please let me play stop vote. interrupting. I'm sorry. Let, let, let me summarize. There's a First Amendment, and I've got some Italian in me, so I can say whatever I want at whatever volume I want, whenever I want. But, oh, <laughs> I deal I the time to Mrs. DeSanto. Please. Excuse me. I yield. My staff does not need to be subjected to that type of behavior. If, if you want to yeah. speak, excuse me. Yes, Stop interrupting, please. I'm just letting you know that behavior and communication will not be tolerated. So please refrain from doing so, so that there may not be any other issues moving forward. Yes, so, 
We will adjourn the GR review. Uh, can I? Can I <laughs> oh, we're back. On the record, ma'am. Judge, I got I'm more. Sorry. I got more. On the record. I'm sorry. This I isn't over till I say it's over. Ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> just excuse I'm me, sir. Just, hand. Sir, I we are done. We are no, we're not done. Review. We're not done. We are done. <laughs> we are done. 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 And you, did I don't give a crap. I got all day. Mr. Rudolph. Mr. Rudolph. Ma'am. I ma was not done speaking. I was not done speaking. Please oh, refrain from interrupting. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you didn't hear me, the adjourned jail review date is December 18th. At 10 30 in the morning. Ooh. I have surgery. On December 18th? Yeah, to fix this. Okay, we can set this to January, Council. Really? You can set it to Neptune. Are you on the docket on January 8th, Mr. Shanky? Oh. I'm sorry, what was the question, Judge? <laughs> January 8th. Are you on the docket? Uh, January 8th, I'll look Your Honor, moment, please. Your Honor, I want Mr. Shanky's job because he doesn't have to say anything. <laughs> uh, no, Mr. Judge, Rudolph. I'm not available on January 8th. And I did say something on your behalf, Mr. Rudolph. I was trying to make it so that you wouldn't go into custody. You seemed like you wanted to have something I'm to say. I advised you of your right I'm to I'm not afraid silent. of that. Okay. This is, I've advised you. Yes, right. I'll pay the fine. And leave me alone. I respect the court. That's the only Are reason you, I went into the Mr. Military. Rudolph, Mr. Rudolph. Mr. Rudolph. Yes, your, your behavior would suggest that perhaps you don't respect the court. Uh, yes, Mr. I Shunky, do, ma'am. Are you available on January 22nd? One moment, Your Honor. Yes, I am available, Judge. Okay. We are we will adjourn this to January 22nd at 10 30 a.m. Which will also give you time for your recovery from surgery, sir. I have a question. Oh, no. What is your what question, is your sir? Final question. Can Mrs. Shaw figure out how to correctly document a notice to appear? Because you know what? I like her. She's nice. She, <laughs> she's cut me breaks. But apparently, she don't know what boxes to check. I have one eye, and I know what failure to appear and then Zoom be two different things. For the record, that is it. Thank you. Sir, God bless you. Sir, some individuals may make mistakes. Yes, ma'am. So maybe perhaps. No, no. No, no. Me. You know what, ma'am? No, I, no, I, I, I respectfully. No. You know what happens? No, let, excuse me. Let me finish. Without interrupting the record, let me finish. She sent you a notice to appear for your oversight meeting in December, and she mistakenly indicated it was in person. She, there's no, listen, you're going to be emailing back into her today so she can correct that. You aren't given, an, you weren't given a fail to appear. So, okay, I see that your lips are moving. You are muted so that you're not interrupting the court. You don't want to listen to what this court has to say, so we are done. January 22nd at 10.30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. We're off the record. Oh, sweet Jesus! What? <laughs> okay, that was fantastic. Thank you, Chad. I'm not sure okay. um, what this is. <laughs> Mr. Roscoe. Mr. Roscoe. Hey, Your Honor, my apologies for interrupting, but I had a. I was wondering if I paid off my balance today, if if that would uh, if I if I could avoid the twenty days. <laughs> Sir, your attorney isn't here. 
I already ordered what I ordered. I'm not re I'm not readdressing it. That is the order of the court. But doesn't that make sense to if I paid off my close this case? Sir, what makes sense is if you have to hold yourself accountable and serve the consequence for the violation. That's what makes sense. So I'm not adjusting the I am not adjusting the court order. You need to report today as instructed. Did well, that's why I served shop? 10 days. That's why I served 10 days and then I was going to pay off Sir, my balance. Please stop. Sir, just one moment. Did you email in the missile? I did, but that's what I'm saying. I'll pay off my balance today. I already served 10 days because of the violation, and we, we got that settled. So You were sentenced to 30. You were sentenced to 30 days, served 10, suspend 20. And in the interim, you picked up another drunk driving offense. Oh, jeez. The court is, has ordered what it's ordered. Uh, can we can we uh, replay this again? Because I mean, <laughs> I, 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 Sir, we're I'll pay off my balance. Judge, can we have a do over? <laughs> Sir, I'll pay off my balance. I don't 20 know what to tell you. Days jail, Mr. Westmoreland. Since yes, Judge. Since you are um, here, I'm just going to call this on the record. I know that no you were not the attorney that represented Mr. Orozco. We're back on the record in the matter of Eric Orozco, 221035. And Mr. Westmoreland is present. Mr. Westmoreland is not the attorney that represented Mr. Orozco during this year review. Mr. Orozco zoomed back in and wanted to um, ask if he could just pay his fines and costs and not serve the 20 days jail that this court ordered. This court then ordered that Mr. Orozco did need to serve the 20 days jail and Mr. Roscoe wants to continue to address the court. So I had Mr. Westmoreland um, uh, jump on, so to speak, um, to advise Mr. Orozco as to his oh, rights and perhaps that he um, needs to perhaps heed what the court's order was. But what else is it, Mr. Orozco? Oh uh, well, I I served ten days in order and because of the violation, and I got twenty suspended because of my good behavior because of the fact that I I had gone to sobriety house for a year. So that's why I was saying like I, I already served ten days for that. You suspended it for it. My balance was the only problem. I could get that paid today, right now. Matter of fact. Well, I get it. I got it. So I, let me, but let isn't, me isn't that let me third clarify. charge a whole different case? Mr. Rasko, let me clarify. You were sentenced to 30 days jail. That was your sentence. I suspended 20. You served 10. I suspended 20. 20 wasn't suspended for good behavior. 20 was suspended to make sure, sir, that you were complying with what you were supposed to have been doing. You did not do that. You picked up a third drunk driving offense, and I'm not sure who you're making faces at, sir. I'm sorry, it's just, I'm twitching, I guess. So I, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not. And so that is why you are now serving the balance of your 20 days. You didn't have 20 days suspended for good behavior. Okay, so does the, the good behavior for you, does that count towards anything? Uh, he's a Wayne County Jail, sir, not this court. Wow. All right. Uh, uh, Michelle gave you the instructions as a how to report today, correct? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. That would be yes? Yes, she will. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Then make sure you're complying with all that. Okay. Thank you. We'll be off the record. Have a good day. Thank you, Judge. 
Okay, the other individuals did not appear, so warrants will issue. Okay. Wow. Well, we started slow. We started slow and depressing. <laughs> Judge Milton's room was a downer, except we got to see Debbie. That was nice. We we had uh we had the, the, the guy in the thirty six D the judge was trying to be enthusiastic, he was having none of it. <laughs> But midstream, midstream, my chat saves me again, sends me over to the last half hour of DeSanto's call, and oh, was it worth the wait. That was fantastic. From anger management guy to that, that guy, I have no idea, but he appeared drunk to me. He appeared wasted at the time. And because he, he just wants what every defendant wants. He just wants it done. Uh, okay, why don't you just complete whatever the, the court ordered and then you're done? You don't get to dictate when it's done. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Oh, he was something else. And then this guy. This guy also just wants it done. He 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 can't he can't conceptualize the notion that picking up his third DUI recently is slowing things down a little bit. <laughs> oh, what a call. What a call. Judge DeSanto gets some real gems. She really does. All right. All right. Thank y'all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'm done with my coffee. I'll see y'all soon.